Thank you, Teresa. This is, uh, we are now live on YouTube, so our meeting has officially begun. And this is the afternoon committee meeting of House Appropriations. Um, and before us at the 1.30, one not the one o'clock hour, but at 1.30, we do have the Department of Labor to go over the budget. And so what I would like to um, make sure that the Committee of Jurisdiction who has joined us, the House um, Commerce Committee is with us to hear this testimony. I want to make sure that you know that the budget that we're seeing today is are the changes from the proposal in January. So the governor's proposal in January is intact, except for the changes that have been made in individual places. So if you don't see a change and there was policy or money from um, the January proposal, that is still on the table. And um, the, um, the, restate, the restated budget um, also can include changes to the quarter year budget. And so there's a lot of moving pieces here that I wanna make sure all committee members uh, realize that what you're seeing before you is not the whole budget. We still have to look to see if there's recommended changes to the quarter and what still exists from the, um, from the 21 budget in January. Um, this committee will be going over all the language on Monday morning at 10 o'clock with Matt Riven. And anybody is welcome to join in either via YouTube or um, you can contact uh, Teresa for a link. And on Thursday and Friday of next week, our committee will be doing public hearings to hear uh, from the public about uh, the entire um, 21 proposed budget from the administration. It's at five o'clock on Thursday and one o'clock on Friday. And Teresa will make sure that all uh, legislators have that link so that you can hear what Vermonters, um, their concerns and um, the support that they have for pieces of the budget. So with that, I'm going to um, welcome uh, Commissioner Harrington uh, to the committee. And I'm looking around and I am going to let you introduce your team. And if our comments could um, initially stick right to the budget and the policy related to the budget. No, with um, the Department of Labor, there's probably going to be lots of desire to ask lots of other questions on other issues. But before we get off on any CRF funding or anything with UI or PUA, I want to get through the budget and the policy related to the budget, and then we can open it up as time um, as time is available. And so we have you here today. Uh, we have you scheduled until two thirty, and then we'll have fifteen minutes of joint um, conversation with the committee of jurisdiction. And with that, Chair Marhat, did you have anything you would like to add? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, no, I don't. Um, I just would ask my committee members to um, to probably refrain from discussing with the commissioner um, any anything um, having to do with with UI um, and any outside of the budget because we are um, planning on having the commissioner in next week um, with our committee, um, so that would save some time and um, we'll have a, a a good two hour discussion with with him and his people next week. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And any CRF funding, um, if it's new CRF funding, we will want to hear about that because that uh, will that may be included in the budget or it may move as a separate bill. I'm not sure how that's going to happen, but uh, Commissioner, you would have it within your budget detail if you had um, a proposal for any additional CRF funding, I believe, because the administration did include it in one package. So I am going to uh, turn it over now to Commissioner Harrington. Welcome, it's nice to see you. Nice to see you, uh, Madam Chairperson. Can you hear me okay? We can, thank you. Um, so thank you for having us here today. Um, uh, as part of my team, I've got uh, DOL's uh, Chief Financial Officer, um, familiar probably to most of you, Chad Wozniak, um, and he can, can drill down into any of the numbers. Um, I think overall from our budget, um, 
you know, we were asked to present something with a slightly reduced uh, general fund amount of 3%, uh, and we were able to identify that. As, as most of you know, um, you know, we are, uh, I think, approximately 85% um, federally funded. Uh, there's uh, only a small portion of our overall budget that um, is general fund, and we do have some special funds and, and interdepartmental um, transfers. Um, most of the special fund money is related to workers' compensation. Um, so when we look at uh, at general fund, we identified, um, I believe it was about three uh, or four key areas uh, in which we reduced um, some of the funding requests, and, and we can talk about those uh, in more detail if you want. Uh, they are um, administrative services, um, which is just overall services for the department, uh, the ICANN project. Um, which uh, is a workforce development initiative in conjunction with um, the Economic Services Division um, uh, over at AHS and uh, wage and hour and earn sick time uh, unit um, simply uh, due to um, some vacancies in that area. Uh, we were uh, able to, to save some funds there. And then finally, in our um, administrative subsidies and budget allowances, um, which is at the bottom of the um, the page, and I'm actually uh, on the more detailed page just because I think that breaks it out more uh, for you folks. So um, we can talk about any of these. Um, my guess is that you may not want to go through line by line, but we can certainly talk about any of the ones that um, are of interest to the committee. Okay, let's uh, let's stop there. And and the reductions that you're showing in the general fund were the targets for the three percent that were given to you from the administration, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And I'm going to open it up to committee members, please, from Commerce or from Appropriations. Are there any of the reductions here that um, anyone would like to have more clarification on or detail on? Mary, I don't have, um, do you have your hand up because you can't raise yours as a co-host? Um, so I'm going to go to uh, Representative Feltis and Mary, text me if you have a question. Thanks. My concern is just regarding that very first one. When you said workforce development, that's something that picks up our ears. Can you tell us a little bit more where that decrease is coming from and why? Sure. So um, the the overall ICANN project is a grant funded project. Um, the specific line you see there were administrative set of, uh, dollars set aside to help administer the program. Um, there's a significant uh, reduction in the ICANN grant, um, and so that federal grant um, that and it, that's part of an interdepartmental transfer um, from AHS is I. I believe is almost being reduced by by more than 60 percent, um, and so uh, our reduction in the administrative dollars uh, there uh, simply um, are specific to this downsizing of the the grant in that effort. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, so the reduction is is um, just so you know, admin. It's not um, services uh, or programmatic uh, efforts that are going to the public. Um, Marty, did you have a follow up or are you? I think since you went off, you. Okay, uh, Representative Kimball. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Harrington, thanks for the presentation. I'm just wondering, looking at your budget and looking at what it was in fiscal year 2020, uh, you projected a decrease for 2020. Um, or the original budget for 2021 was a decrease, but you're looking at basically bringing it up to where it was uh, in uh, the previous fiscal year. Um, so just wondering, and that looks like it's all in labor. So you're anticipating all in people. So you're looking at anticipating a decrease in staffing for this coming year, but then this new budget is showing an increase in that staffing back to the previous levels. Is that, am I reading that correctly? I, 
Yeah, and Chad can too. My my guess is if what I'm looking at here um, is actual and in, the increases in the federal fund money for UI administration. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that is correct. So if you look at um, the the budget development uh, addendum form that that's on the screen there, you'll see the federal line has um, some dollars increase in there, and most of that is well, actually all of that is in response to uh, to COVID and, and the different programs. Um, some of that is implementation, um, not a ton of dollars for implementation, but the majority of the dollars that we've received were to run the program, and, and obviously we need people to do that. So that's why you're seeing the increase, uh, the, the federal dollar increase and the increase in the line items of personnel. That's what I thought. Thank you. Are there other questions? I'm looking, I don't see them. Uh, uh, Representative Hooper. Thank you. Um, and hi, it's nice to see you, Chad and Commissioner. Uh, can you give us a little more detail about the federal money that's coming in? I, you know, un unless it's just to say it's an increase to help with the UI and PUA administration. I am, is this separate dollars from the CRF money is one of my questions. Do you want it? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am, thank you. Um, the, the, the dollars that you see here are federal dollars that came to us directly through our um, unemployment insurance, uh, re regular, regular add-in dollars. So the 1.8 is in addition to uh, our normal UI fund, UI admin dollars. Um, and that was given to us almost at the beginning of um, the, the COVID crisis. Um, within the first month, we received that 1.8 million. Um, and um, the other dollars that are listed there are um, dollars that we had to apply for, for uh, the implementation of the programs themselves. None of these dollars are CRF dollars. These are all um, through USDOL proper. Thank you. And have you received CRF dollars also? And how we, much? We did um, put in an ask for CRF dollars through uh, 630. And um, I don't have that number off. I can get it. At my fingertips at the moment, I can certainly lead through some paperwork and get that for you within the next few minutes. Okay, and I assume you'll have additional requests into the current fiscal year for that money. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and I don't know what the next two acronyms mean, the FPUC and the PEUC implementation. I don't recognize sure. those. Uh, so um, the FPUC is the $600 federal program uh, that ended at the end of July, federal pandemic unemployment compensation. Uh, the PEUC is the additional 13 weeks of unemployment. Uh, so the uh, PEUC is pandemic emergency unemployment compensation. And that was the additional 13 weeks that individuals got on top of their 26 uh, weeks of unemployment. So it's an extended benefit. So you've got 1.5 million for PUA implementation and then some administrative money. So the PUA implementation is money that went straight out or, and I don't understand the difference. It, everything, so everything you see there is um, administrative dollars. It's not uh, benefit dollars. So you got so two that was, costs. So that was everything, admin, overhead, technology, uh, uh, anything other than benefits. And, and again, you're just listing them probably because they called them two different things, but the PUA implementation and the FPUC implementation are both administrative dollars. Is that what you just said? Yes. Okay, thank you. So those are the three, um, the, the four in that line right there. So the UI admin is traditional UI. The PUA is pandemic unemployment uh, assistance for um, uh, 
self-employed or otherwise ineligible uh, individuals. And then the FPUC was the $600. The PEUC uh, um, will be uh, the extended benefit. My guess is eventually there might be one for LWA, for the Lost Wage Assistance Program, um, but uh, have not received those funds yet. Okay, thanks. Um, and if I can keep going, um, um, so this crosswalk is in addition to what you proposed um, way back when in another world in time in January, where, let me pause there and make sure that that is correct. So these are additional dollars um, that have come to the department from um, USDOL since our last budget um, proposal. Um, specifically, though, um, with regards to the general fund, um, we're actually asking for a decrease of 162335 um, from our original uh, ask um, to this new um, revised budget. And so, and this is going to be hard for everybody else who's not looking at the crosswalk from January, but in that you propose an increase um, in technology infrastructure of 428,000, some additional VOSHA money and 300,000 for your relocation assistance program. And you are continuing to propose that? And these are all general fund dollars. Yeah, so everything that was proposed in the original budget uh, remains. Um, and simply what's before you today is um, are the changes to that. I, I wanted to make sure that that was yep. abundantly clear to everybody. Yep. I'm a little Thank surprised you. to see that you're believing that it's the relocation assistance program should con continue. I would think that the pandemic would have kind of brought that to a staggering halt. Uh, well, I, I would say that um, as we look to recovery, um, that program becomes even more um, in, uh, critical uh, to our recovery efforts uh, and growing um, Vermont's population. You know, whether it's um, to meet the needs uh, of the state, um, but also to meet the needs of the employers, those did not go away. I think certainly, um, you know, the first half of this current budget year has been very different. Um, but I, you know, we're we're trying to keep an eye on um, uh, future focus uh, as we are are looking at overall recovery efforts. Okay, we, we may want to have a further conversation about that. Um, I, I feel like I'm dominating the conversation here. I want to um, let others in. Hey, uh, Representative Ralph, I think you have a question. And you're listed as Representative Watson. Yeah, but, well, I, I'm changing my name. So I uh, apparently a part of the process for changing my name is using it. Uh, so, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that, so, and now I now I can do that. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Commissioner. Uh, so I, I I feel like I'm missing some context, um, and it makes it hard to ask questions without really um, understanding what you know some even some of the acronyms on here. And and uh, but I but I do understand this is you you were looking at a three percent reduction in your original proposal for the budget. Um, this doesn't look like a ton of line items, and I don't know what, what else we have planned for the day, but I, I, I do, I, I mean, this is at the discretion of the chair, obviously, but it, I wonder if it does make sense to go through each one of these. Like I said, it doesn't look like much, but specifically, I am um, curious about the $50,000 uh, wage an hour earned sick time decrease, um, uh, what, 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 what that is, and is that being replaced by other um crf funds is that is that a position um if you could go into that and also if, if the chair uh, thinks it's a good idea just to go through each one of these line items i i think that would help uh, so, so I, um we nope. have the time and Sorry. so that would be great commissioner if you just walk through them and give a, bleed, a, a, a 
better explanation or deeper explanation. Sure, and I don't um, I don't know what you have before you, um, but um, for uh, whoever is sharing the screen, you may want to scroll down. There may be a secondary page there. Um, if not, there is a, a second page that has additional line items on it that was sent out. We can resend that if we need to, um, but it, it goes into more detail. Teresa, What's that? The second one page. This is it. This is all I have. So I can send you the, um, send it the additional to, page it's here, It's Teresa. Teresa in German, Commissioner. What's Patton. that? Patton. Yep, got it. You have it there, Mike, or do you want me to try and send it? No, I've got it. Uh, so, uh, Teresa, that should be coming your way. So um, that, that may um, uh, shine some light on this for you, but specifically to the 50,000, um, that, uh, that line does not, um, that reduction doesn't um, uh, implicate or, or suggest that there's a reduction in staff. Our wage and hour unit has um, three individuals in it. Um, you know, and, and when we look at administering that program, um, there is occasionally um, uh, funding available there. Um, so we were able to remove some of that just based on the fact that I um, actually <clears throat> most of the staff in the wage and hour unit have been working on UI related um, issues. Uh, and so, um, when you actually uh, look at this year, um, the first half, uh, the first good section of this year um, is likely to have a lot of their time uh, billed to uh, claims processing and, and UI, um, and they've been assisting us there. So, um, Chad, I don't know if you want to add any more, um, but I think that covers it in terms of the 50000 out of wage well, an hour. It, it does. So, um, uh, the only thing I'd like to add is, Dad, we've lost you. Yep, yep. I was muted by the commissioner. Sorry. We, we apologize. <laughs> um, so um, the wage and hour program was a standalone program for several years. Um, and then uh, I, I think it was two years ago, uh, the earned sick time program was also instituted through the legislature. And so we had to add some dollars to the wage and hour program to implement um, the work that we needed to do to carry those, those duties out. And um, we've consistently had um, some small dollars left, you know, 50,000 or so dollars left over in that program at the end of each year. Um, and we felt that, uh, you know, when being asked to, to carve out 3% of our general fund budget, that that was a great place to, to take that and, and try to bring that budget more in line with what is, what is reality. So um, we, we don't anticipate any programmatic uh, impact with that reduction of fifty thousand dollars in the, the wage and hour program. And I have a question Lisa, how do we stop the loop? Somebody has more than one device. There we go. It's the commission. There we go. Um so you said that um from the wage and hour and earn sick most have been working on UI issues. We didn't hear this, but would they have been covered by CRF funds since they were working on UI issues? Um, they would likely be covered by UI admin fund dollars, so not CRF, but probably in that additional funding that you see there. We also anticipate more funding coming from USDOL for admin uh, as well. So it would be federal money, um, okay. but but not just CRF. And then I did want to ask, oh, no, you weren't finished. Um, I'll come back because you were walking down through the pieces. So can we go back to... Um, or do you want to continue on the sheet? Okay, let's continue on this sheet. Um, so you'll see, uh, I think we've hit on most of these, though. I, the other one, the the one that's in um, administrative services um, is a small amount, 8,000, um, a, a larger amount out of the ICANN, the 57,000. Uh, the 50,000 out of the wage an hour, um, and then uh, at the bottom, another small amount of about $5,700. Okay. 
Uh, it, you will also see at the bottom of this sheet, um, it, and it may just help uh, identify what our original um, versus new uh, ask is, uh, and that might help as well. So you'll see that our uh, original was five million, it was just for general fund, five million four hundred and eleven dollars. Our new um, is five million two hundred and forty eight dollars for a reduction of uh, one hundred and sixty two thousand three hundred and thirty five dollars. Representative Ralph, did, are there other areas that you would like a fuller explanation on on the reduction in the general fund? Uh, no, um, no, that was uh, really my only question was about the um, fifty thousand reduction in our wages, and I and I, uh, I think they both gave a um, good response. Uh, and I did just hear uh, you read those numbers, but I didn't hear where those those reductions came from, and maybe it's not that important. But um, I'll let other folks ask questions. So the, the reductions that you just heard, Teresa, if you go back up to the budget document, <clears throat> the original budget document, the, this one, the, the 5411000 is the top green line, and, and that's where the starting position from January, and then the reductions that brought them to the um, a negative uh, to, to reduce by 162. I think those, that, is, that is what he just captured. Uh, yeah, no, I was, I, he, he talked about the uh, service fee cost reductions and the admin subsidies and I, and I heard him say the numbers, but I didn't hear what, what, um, like where those cost cuts were coming from. Um, I, I can, I can ex explain the last one, which is um, where you see ADS and DHR across the board, there was a 5% reduction within uh, service funds, uh, internal service funds, and uh, we have been told that there's no reduction actually to programs or uh, that, you know, to critical services to people. Uh, we've heard from ADS where uh, they have, uh, Marty can talk more about this, uh, looked at different software and savings in the cloud. And, and so that is where that five, that $5,700 savings comes from. And we're seeing that across the board. Uh, service fee costs, um, is, is the service fee, that, that is, um, that's not fee for space, is it? Is the service fee cost? Or it's not fee for space. The eighty-seven hundred. Both both of those uh, pools of dollars that you're talking about, Madam Chair, are um, in response to the the internal service fee reductions that we received. So it's a combination of all of that. The you know the the vision charges that that we receive um, some fee for space. Um, the, the DII or, or ADS as, as you've talked about and, and things like that. Okay, and that includes also the 8,700? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, and then- Thank you. Okay, um, are there any other questions? Um, uh, Representative Dickinson, Representative Fagan. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I wanna go back to something that um, that Mary Hooper brought up about other funds. I don't have the, the scope of detail that the Appropriations Committee has on what was done down for January or what the original budget was, but it seems to me, I remember hearing about the fact that the Department of Labor did have a software, hardware update on their um, computer systems for information. Um, and it certainly was clear, they were working with an old system. And um, that, from what the commissioner just said, is still in the budget, and that's still something going forward that needs to be done looking to the future. Am, am I correct in that, commissioner, that that's what I'm remembering about? Uh, so a, a little bit. So let me just um, clarify, make sure we're all on the same page. So um, there have been uh, multiple CRF requests um, that we have put forward, I think most Notably, obviously, early on included things like our um, call center vendor 
uh, and some other um, uh, work that has been done on um, system implementation and maintaining our, our age system. Um, there was uh, a request for early on uh, about $4 million um, to rehab uh, the claimant portal. Um, that was the $4 million that got removed um, and, and was not approved. Um, and then uh, a more recent request had gone in um, for a revised number of 750,000, uh, which was for two um, software and, and service uh, implementations um, that would help us automate uh, and, and hopefully achieve some efficiencies in our service work um, rela directly related to UI. Um, what is in our budget uh, and part of the original budget for technology, um, as uh, Representative Hooper mentioned, was uh, $428,000 for technology and infrastructure. That was um, prior to COVID completely. Um, that was actually uh, what we identified as an increase um, from the prior year in terms of technology costs related um, to the implementation of, of ADS uh, and the additional services coming out of there. So um, again, uh, recognizing that federal funds at the time were essentially being reduced uh, across programs, but our technology costs were going up as a department. Um, and, and that's not a, a criticism. Um, there's been a lot of value in terms of integ system integrity and, and system security and, and um, the staff working on those. So, um, but, um, you know, we were we were at the point where we were going to start dipping into programmatic dollars uh, and actual services being provided to the public um, to cover IT costs. So we put in a separate line item um, specific uh, to IT. Uh, and those, again, are not specific to COVID response um, or, or UI modernization. Uh, they are um, are uh, specific to um, the, just the overall needs of technology for the department. Thank you. Representative Fagan. Thank you, and thank you, Commissioner. Um, you started down the path of answering the question that I have, because if you looked at the January uh, budget uh, document that you did put in, there was $428,000 all general fund for technology and infrastructure. And I presume that's what you were just talking about, although I'll let you answer that question. You're shaking your head yes, yes. so that's good. So now what I want to do is I want to ask you about future plans, and I know that they are in flux. We were part of a consortium that included several states, but the last iteration of it was, I think, Idaho and North Dakota or something like that, and that's now um, no longer uh, in existence. Um, we got a little bit, but not much, and uh, we still have a computer system that to say antiquated wouldn't do justice to the word antiquated. Um, so what are the plans for the future? And I know that the, the, you know, the consortium just ended, what, two months ago, three months ago? So you're not very far along, but you've got to have some, some development processes going on such that you, you know, plans are being developed. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Right before this, um, I was in joint information and technology um, asking, and they had the same question, kind of what is next? So um, certainly my, uh, our minds for a long time, uh, about five years, or I'm sure much longer than that, but at least in earnest over the past five years, uh, we have belonged uh, in to I wouldn't say multiple consortiums, just different iterations. Um, states have come and gone. Um, at the at the end of last um, last year and and heading into 2020, I mean, it became very apparent to us that um, we were uh, out of uh, pretty much out of our federal funding available to cover modernization. Um, that the vendor uh, or the state that was providing most of the development. Um, was still significantly um, uh, behind or farther away from actual implementation, uh, and we had major concerns around the quality of the work and the and the 
product we were going to get in the end. And so um, that included us, uh, the state of Idaho, um, and then also a recent addition of the state of North Dakota. Um, and at that time, um, North Dakota shared many of the same concerns that we had, um, but better for them. They learned it early in the process instead of late in the process. Uh, and so we, as three states, decided to dissolve the consortium. Um, you know, uh, USDOL stopped funding uh, modernization efforts um, back in 2017, uh, and so no new monies had really gone out to any states um, for consortium efforts since then. Um, obviously, I think that's going to change uh, going forward. There's been a renewed interest, if you will, on UI modernization across the country. Um, the question will be whether or not USDOL um, and the Fed federal government will allow for states to get funding um, to implement, you know, um, standalone solutions or whether they'll do what they did last time, which is only fund consortium work. Um, the concern with consortium work is that every time there's a, a state in there, the state is vying for a solution that meets all of their needs, right? And so um, what we found is that um, our uh, the other members of the consortium, specifically Idaho, from from our time in there, um, had had most of the resources, had most of the technology, and most of the um, talent um, because they were the lead state, uh, and um, and so it became apparent that um, regardless of what Vermont needed in a system, uh, we were going to end up with the system that uh, Idaho decided was um, met their needs. Uh, and so that's where um, we became very um, reluctant to move forward. I think going forward, there are multiple options, um, whether it's um, it, as an individual state by ourselves and identifying sources of, of funding to cover that. Um, certainly, it's probably the most expeditious route. Um, I think if we if we look at consortium work, they just tend to take a long time because every decision needs to be negotiated. Uh, and uh, so, but there is a, there are certainly opportunities for consortium work too. Um, to date, I believe there's only been one consortium uh, that has received federal funding that has actually delivered on a complete project uh, in the end. Um, but there have been dozens of failed uh, projects to the tunes of billions of dollars, um, and so that's been been disappointing. And um, I think from our standpoint, uh, our next steps are um, working with the Agency of Digital Services, specifically the Enterprise Project Management Office, um, and putting together a comprehensive RFI with clear business requirements, uh, and then moving from the RFI request for information into the RFP or request for proposal process. The RFI will give us the information we need to come back to the legislature to say, here's what we have for possible solutions, here's what they're gonna cost us, and here's how quickly they can get it done. Um, and obviously those are, are rough estimates, but it'll give us at least a frame for the, for the conversation. Uh, and from there, when we select our vendor, um, you know, going forward, we'll know prior to that, are we, are we doing this alone? Are we doing it with another state? Are we doing it with state dollars? Are we doing it with federal dollars? Um, that's all going to come out of that RFI and business requirements gathering process, which uh, we actually kicked off um, just last week. Uh, so we are moving in that direction. Thank you. Um, one, one other quick follow up. So would the RFI generate the, let me make sure. Yeah, I'm, I am on. Uh, would the RFI generate the ability to go to USDOL and say, look, we have a plan. This is what it is. Fund it, please. Uh, it, it could. Um, I think uh, it, it obviously hasn't passed and, and there's, um, you know, uh, some entanglement in Congress right now. But um, the last uh, package that was approved by the House um, had significant dollars in it for UI modernization. Okay. Uh, so we, we do expect that there's going to be funding for UI modernization. Um, what we don't know yet is what are the strings attached to that money. Uh, and I think we, you know, we can come back with a plan um, and a recommendation once we know, um, you know, whether or not the, the federal funds are appropriate. I mean, if you, without knowing 
uh, all the details. If okay. if you wanted my preliminary assessment, you know, you're going to probably have federal money that's attached to some type of consortium. Um, and uh, if we look at a consortium, you know, we're probably doubling our timeline for implementation um, because, again, everything is negotiated from the contract to the MOU to every decision and modification. Um, I, I appreciate so I, the update. That, Thank you. Much. Uh, and yes, just sir. as a reminder, the, the system is about 40 years old. Is that correct? I believe it actually turned 50 on uh, June 9th <laughs> Why did uh, I ask? of this Thank year. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. So it, it may be old and, and antiquated. However, I mean, it has served us well, even though it does has it have its issues and it needs to be updated. If you think about a 50-year-old system, what it's done, and um, compared to where other states are, their UI you know, we're frustrated, but it, it, we could be in worse shape, I guess. Uh, yeah, and, and oh, go ahead. Uh, and then uh, we have a question from Representative Hooper. I think you had a follow up here, Mary, or on another topic. Um, yeah, so I guess my, I, I have a series of questions, not surprisingly. Uh, in terms of a follow up of the expenditure of GF money, the 428, um, I am. Is this the match that we're required to have to do to draw down federal money for IT work? Uh, no, because this the 428 was pre-existing prior to COVID, uh, and so the 428 was um, additional costs associated with um, with IT. Uh, and instead of going back and again trying to pull blood from a stone, you know, for instance, in our um, labor market information division, um, they had a reduction in funding uh, for that year. In our UI division at the time, uh, they had had a reduction of funding to the tune of about a half a million dollars. Uh, in workforce development, there was a reduction in funding, federal funding. So again, we could have chosen to absorb that half a million dollars or the $428,000 in those programs, but we literally were going to either be, um, you know, laying staff off or pulling um, services. Uh, and so we, we went to both finance and management and the agency of administration, and then eventually to, to you all and said, um, here's the situation we're in. This is what it's costing us to run our systems um, above and beyond what they've, they're already contributing from the prior year. Uh, and so, um, you know, at that point it was passed and, and accepted that um, we could use uh, some general fund money to offset technology costs. Thank you. Just to be clear, we did not accept that yet. That was part of the FY21 budget that we're considering now, not Unless you're referring Correct. to 20. Correct. Yeah. So that, that still is up for discussion. So it was, and, yeah, it was what was presented in January. Right. right. Yeah. Um, so what you're saying is, is that we're backfilling because of, a, of the f decline in federal monies across a variety of programs. But I, I mean, we're backfilling, but not, not because of a de de decline in federal. I, it, the decline in federal monies it plays the part, but the cost it takes um, for us under the ADS model uh, and with the enhancements being made um, to the department, it's costing us more for technology. Um, and that's not specific to the any one program or project because we pay for those separately. But when we look at operation of our um, data center that's on site, increased cybersecurity, uh, increased um, uh, integrity, uh, system integrity and, and updating of our systems as a, as a whole, um, that's what it's costing us to, in terms of, uh, that essentially, I think represents, um, doesn't that represent our SLA uh, dollar amount roughly with ADS? I mean, we pulled that number, we calculated that number from There's somewhere. Yeah. Dollar, yeah. Yeah. So that was the, that essentially is the increase in our service level agreement from ADS from one year to the next. Okay. Um, I see that okay. Marty has her hand up, Kitty, and I have okay. a question Thank about you. a different a series of questions. So I'll, yeah. I'll go to Marty and then come back to you, Mary. Thanks. Thank you. 
Okay, that, that's what I was just wanting to clarify because frankly, I don't remember seeing this when we looked at the, the Labor Department of Labor budget in January, but it sounds to me, and Chad can clarify, is this what is normally called from ADS, their allocation charges and demand charges based upon your use of technology within the department? And this was an exceptional amount or it had, because you don't show those separately on your January crosswalk. So it sounds to me as if you've just called it differently, but it sounds to me as if it's the standard ADS, as you say, SLA charges, allocation charges and demand charges for the technology that is used within your department. And they have a formula for calculating those out. Last year, we had two or three departments that were concerned about the charges that came from ADS because there had been a, not a reevaluation, but a review of many departments and, and certain departments did go up dramatically because services were reclassified. And ADS did go to many departments and say, okay, yes, it looks like there's a big change here and we need to sit down and fit together and figure out how we, we can help you control those costs. So, I, and I don't know if you went to ADS and did that with them or not, but I guess what my com I'm asking as a confirmation, is this just simply the allocation and demand charges that they charge to you not for specific projects, not for specific software, but just general service charges for your standard operations. And if that's the case, then we may want to review with ADS to see if there's a way to help you resolve those charges for, for a future year. So uh, I'll let Chad jump in, but my understanding is that, yes, those are not related to specific projects. Um, they are um, demand charges or service charges, um, but they, that only represents the increase in those charges from FY20 to FY21. So um, the, the charges as they existed prior to FY21 um, are still, uh, there's still a portion of each of our programs paying um, for IT. Um, this was the, the, the 428 represents the actual increase for over year okay. over year. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mark. And Mary, I think yes. Mary, I think yes. I can work with ADS and see if we can find uh, get get to the bottom of why there were those increases, and then Thank you. perhaps resolve some of it. Thank you, Marty. I appreciated that you brought a lot of clarity to this. So essentially, we're seeing these increases bulked up in one place, but in fact, the actual service fee is also embedded in all of the other budgets, I believe is what I just heard said. And so it would be interesting to know well, I'll take this offline with Marty and others. Thank you. Are there other questions at this time? Um, Representative Marcotte, do you have anything you would like to add or ask at this time for your committee? And, and we have to remember not to look just at this piece, but to look back at, at the, full, um, the full proposal in, um, in January. I have I have nothing at this point. Um, I do appreciate the the other sheet that the commissioner sent. Um, that'll give us an ability to look at everything um, prior to our discussions with them next week. Also, thank you. And so, before Mary, you ask a couple more questions. What I have written down is uh, the consideration of keeping the three hundred thousand or not relocation efforts. Um, not for this budget and probably no language, but for the future, uh, Peter brought up, you know, the future IT system and, and replacing the, the 50 year old legacy system and that, uh, how is that going to progress, which we would work with uh, the energy and technology committee on. Um, and the, uh, from the January budget, the 428 for IT work and Marty, you're going to work with ADS uh, to 
we understand where those increases are and uh, work with Mary on those. Okay, Mary, you have um, an, an additional question? Yeah, thank you. And um, it would be wonderful if the Commerce Committee wanted to take a deeper dive into what I'm going to ask about. So I'm referring, I, I have a, everybody else is at a disadvantage. I've pulled out the January budget documents and of the 5.4 million in general fund that go to the Department of Labor, 1.3 is in the Workforce Education and Training Fund. Um, and my broad questions are, were all of those, given the disruption that has happened due to COVID, were these, exp were these programs delivered and are there savings there? So for example, there's the so-called returnship program for 100,000, 101,000. There's 75,000 for corrections training. And I, I'm questioning all of those expenditures and whether or not um, they were actually made in the wet fund. Well, uh, so, um... These, if we're talking about the FY20 budget, budget they were utilized for FY21. Um, you know, we're only uh, 45 days into that budget cycle. Um, so, uh, from from that perspective, I can certainly have our workforce development director come and share about each of those programs with regards to how they performed last year uh, and whether um, whether all those funds were expended last year. But my understanding is, um, you know, that. In terms of what you see here, um, that was um, roughly the same as the year before. We had some additional funds, I think, um, but but overall they were utilized during the prior fiscal year. I, I'm sorry, Commissioner. I didn't. I, I was confusing in my question. You're proposing to have this expenditure in FY21. I am assuming that. Some of these services, I mean, we're a quarter of the way, we're into the year, and I'm assuming that you're not able to deliver some of these services. Do you believe that you will deliver them throughout the rest of the year? My, my expectation is yes. Uh, again, I would go back to our workforce development team. Um, they are continuing to provide virtual services at a pretty heavy pace. Um, a lot of these were grants. Uh, so those grant awards would still be provided um, to community programs and, and community efforts. Um, so whether you're talking about internships, um, we've already started some of the work on the uh, internship program. There's block grants in here. Um, there's training within corrections um, and additional training grants. So um, again, very little of what you see here is actually administrative dollars. Uh, what you're seeing here are, grant, are funds that are typically awarded out and they would still be awarded out this year. So I'm intrigued by that. And so maybe you could have your workforce director get in touch with me and we can have a more detailed conversation. Sure. Please, thank you. Are there other questions from committee members? Representative O'Sullivan, is that a hand up or are you working on your screen? Actually, no, but I'll just do it. Verbally, I would like Representative Hooper, I would like to be part of that conversation. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Are there any other, are there any other com conversations? Are there any other uh, questions? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, this oh, I'm is- sorry, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, Representative Watson. <laughs> uh, I laugh at when I hear it. I know um, I'm going to have to be, learn this new. <laughs> So this is uh, somewhat of an off topic um, uh, question uh, on topic, uh, but I did get a question from a constituent, constituent in regards to um, the uh, potential for states to give uh, the $300 stimulus for five weeks to unemployed people in Vermont. Um, yes. And I was, uh, so I, I think that there's a, I feel like I'm probably way ahead of the conversation. I have no idea what the background is, if we have the money to even do this, but I was curious if the uh, if you all had 
looked into this and um, and are, are starting starting to explore options for this and um, what it might cost to do something like that. So and if this um, is if way off topic, feel free to uh, cut me off. <laughs> uh, I'll just respond in brief. I, if we're talking specifically about the three hundred dollar lost wage assistance program, which was proposed um, through uh, the president's memorandum using FEMA uh, dollars, um, we are moving forward with an application to FEMA uh, for a three hundred dollar um, benefit, uh, and um, and looking to expedite not only that that application but also the implementation of that program. It's likely um, the program is not going to run more than three to four weeks uh, before it runs out of money. Uh, and so um, it's it's and when I say run out of money, I mean literally when when the funds are gone, the program uh, ends or terminates, and um, there's not even an allowable use for um, uh, retroactive payments uh, at that time. Um, so uh, it's imperative that we get our application in uh, as quickly as possible and and have a um, quick solution for. Um, drawing down that, accepting the grant, drawing down the money, uh, and, and issuing benefits. Th uh, thank you. That's, um, I guess that's good news, uh, to hear. Do we, do we have a, uh, um, sort of a understanding of when we might know whether our application was accepted? So, uh, I believe it, if, if it's not in, um, we're literally in the process of maneuvering through the federal portal. Um, at, at least we were when I signed on to this meeting, um, which is, as you can imagine, like all federal things, uh, cumbersome. Um, so uh, it should be in, uh, you know, before the end of the day. Um, and what we're hearing from other states is that um, they are typically hearing back in a matter of days um, from FEMA. So as long as FEMA doesn't have any issues with our application, um, I'm assuming we would hear back probably by mid to late week next week. Um, and we've already started the process of, of what it would take to implement the program. Um, it's not, you know, it's somewhat, simple compared to other programs, but nothing um, is necessarily simple when it's got um, federal federal monies tied to it. So um, there are certain criteria for eligibility and reporting and, and processing that um, just make, make it so there's a lot of hoops to jump through. But we've started that process so that we can um, move as quickly as possible once we know we've got the funds allocated. Thank you, Commissioner. That's, uh, that's nice to hear again. Uh, so it doesn't sound like we need any additional capacity to administer that if, uh, if we were accepted? I, no, but I, I would just draw your attention. So um, in an upcoming request for CFR dollars, you know, it, it would be the administration's hope that we could offer an additional benefit. So um, for those who have followed the, the LWA program, there were, there were essentially two options, right? You could um, apply for the $300 benefit, and it's called $300 included, um, where the state's match is included in that $300 because you can use use existing UI benefits as your match. Um, and then there's also the on top of uh, where um, some states, if they're doing the on top of, most are doing included, but um, if they're doing the on top of, they're adding an additional um, $100 to make the total benefit amount of the supplement $400. Um, that was going to take longer just given the, the makeup and, and how we as a state administer CRF dollars for that because the 100 would have to come from CRF dollars. Um, so we're submitting our, our application as a $300 included uh, match benefit, um, but we will be proposing um, uh, to the joint uh, fiscal committee next week um, that uh, that they use additional CRF dollars um, to, to provide that additional $100 benefit on top of the 300. So we could get people the $400 total benefit. Either way, it would take CRF dollars and we didn't want to slow down our application to FEMA um, for that. Makes sense. Thank you, Commissioner Harrington. Thank you. Thank you Commissioner. Uh, Representative Yacobone? Yes. Um, I apologize. Uh, this is probably not a budget question, but the last question piqued my interest. First, uh, Commissioner, thank you for all your 
hard work and, and help during this situation. Um, uh, I'm trying to determine whether we should expect another surge and uh, concurrent backlog in applications should there be additional federal relief, whether it's uh, 400, 600, 200, or what have you, PUA, including self-employed, or mm -hmm. is that system fairly seamless? Could it be fairly seamless for Vermonters who have been or are receiving uh, benefits? So, uh, great question. Uh, nothing is as easy as it sounds. Um, so, I, I don't know whether we'll see another full surge. Um, we will see an uptick, as many of you know, uh, for unemployment um, as we head into the winter months and we see um, layoffs within the construction industry and the granite industry. Um, those are typical here in Vermont. So, we do expect a influx of claims at that time. Um, like Likewise, I think when, um, you know, if, if things haven't changed in, in the global climate, um, as we move into the winter months and um, food service has to move inside, um, we may see some additional layoffs come out of that. Um, our system from in terms of numbers of claimants can handle it. I'm not concerned about that. Um, areas where I do get concerned um, are areas like uh, for instance, uh, and and the folks in in um, house commerce, you know, when you when you are laid off uh, within a benefit year, you file, you stop filing. When you come back to the trough, if you will, you have to reopen your claim. Uh, and right now, there is not a, a quick and simple. Um, method for reopening a claim in PUA, um, but also in UI, because in most circumstances, um, when you reopen a claim, you're calling our claim center to reopen your claim. Um, so we, we do have thoughts on how to mitigate that when we come back around in, in what will be October and November uh, in most cases. Um, and that will include either work with our um, with our current call center and their capacity, but also there may be um, some changes that can be made to the online application to allow for reopens, uh, if you will, within the same benefit year. And if there's a follow up, or are you... okay. you well, have... I, I no, uh, none of these things, nothing. Nothing ever goes smoothly, and I just have this vision of uh, tens of thousands of people again going through what we did in the spring. Um, and that's not a criticism. It's just trying to uh, yeah. assess the situation and prepare for it. Thank you. No, and, and I've appreciated your support, Representative, so thank you. Um, you know, I, with all claims, and I think this also becomes a challenge, too, is um, when we talk about things like adjudications and appeals, um, you know, every, every claim, every weekly claim gets a determination, and every um, claim could potentially go through the adjudication process. Every determination on eligibility has a right to appeal, um, you know, so... We're also doing our best to make sure we are staffed uh, as best we can in those areas. I will say it has been hard to fill even vacant positions we have and find qualified individuals uh, during this time. Um, and, but you know, when we're talking about total unemployment numbers of, of 40 or 50,000 uh, weekly claimants in total, um, you know, that's that's a lot of claims going through adjudications and appeals. Um, so we are, we are working on those and trying to think outside the box on how those claims are processed. And if there are ways to, to kind of mitigate that, that process and shorten that timeline, that's our, our ultimate goal without just throwing more bodies at it, but we are throwing more people at it um, whenever possible. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Mary, I think you have the final question and then we are over our time period. And um, I just want to uh, circle around with the policy committee how we're going to tie up the budget. Go ahead, Mary. Well, thank you. I just don't want to leave a misunderstanding about the potential for the additional um, unemployment or PUA money. So there, as I understand it, the administration has proposed using 
uh, about tw uh, using $20 million of CRF money to cover the $300 a week cost of providing that benefit. And then we are hoping that FEMA will allow FEMA money to put in the extra, the, the additional 100. Am, am, uh, I got that wrong no, that's entirely? Flipped. It's, it's flipped. So okay. um, FEMA will cover the $300 benefit. Um, we are proposing CRF funds for an additional 100 okay. on top of that. So it'll bring the total to 400 per claimant per week. Okay. And so to do that match of the FEMA money to provide the additional hundred dollars a week will cost, that's the 20 million. Am I correct in that? So, yeah. So, and I mentioned this earlier, just to, I don't want to overcomplicate it. So states are allowed to use um, a, monies that are already being paid out of the UI trust fund as its actual match for the 300. So in the end, the state could essentially say, we want FEMA to cover the cost of the $300 benefit because we think we're issuing enough in traditional UI trust fund dollars to count as our match. So for instance, if you had a million dollars coming out of the FEMA money, uh, we would have to show that we were paying at least $250,000 in traditional UI benefits. Uh, and so based on our modeling, we're already meeting the match requirement, um, but uh, you know, we we are also proposing that CRF money be set aside so that we can issue um, an additional $100 benefit to claimants that would bring the total benefit to $400 per week okay. per claimant. Thank you. And, Got it. And the, the, the money that would need to be set up to do that extra $100, what is that amount? Uh, I think we calculated about 45,000 claimants uh, at a four week period, um, it's roughly 20 million. Um, so at four so weeks, it comes up to about 4.5 million to 5 million per week. Yeah, thank you. That's a, that's a 20 million. So I think we need to close here. Um, how we'll work is we want an email, uh, memo from the committees of jurisdiction on the budgets. Don't cite statute, don't you don't have to dig into sections of of the bill or sections of language, but if um, the highlighted areas that are of concern, if you could um, just write back just in a quick email to Teresa and she'll forward it to the committee. And if you have um, any further discussion, which I think you will be having, um, uh, Representative Hooper uh, has this budget and if she could be included in your conversations in, in your room, that would be helpful. And we need a memo back by September 1st or 2nd. Um, we would like to have the budget out by that next, by that Friday, which I think may be too soon. The next Monday is Labor Day. But the, the, the latest date would be Tuesday after Labor Day, which means we'd have to have all of the work done on Friday anyway. So it's just proofreading and voting. So it's a very fast turnaround time. And uh, so it, it would be an informal vote, and uh, Mary will be uh, working with your committee um, on this budget, and uh, I'm sure on other other pieces that you're looking at. And CRF dollars, they may be in the budget, travel separately, but we should handle on all of that at the same time. Any final thoughts, uh, Mike, that you have to share? No, I, which Mike? Uh, well, I'll go to, uh, couldn't you tell which square I was looking at? <laughs> uh, Hollywood squares and uh, you're jumping around. Uh, Representative Marcotte. Uh, no, I think uh, um, we'll be prepared next week because um, we're going through um, not just with Department of Labor, with the Agency of Commerce um, and understanding more also about the grants um, that are out there um, and, and any changes that that we need to make. Um, we'll be um, inviting Linda along on that, making sure that uh, Mary is invited um, to our discussions with Department of Labor next week. So, um, and we'll get you that memo as soon as we can. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, thank you. Thank you, Chad, for coming in. And um, we look forward to getting these budgets done quickly, but responsibly. 
and um, and so that we're prepared for January. Uh, great, and thank you, everybody. Appreciate the time, uh, and I do truly appreciate everybody's support over the past uh, what what seems like eternity, but has only been six months. Um, and I have one task coming out of today, so I will loop back with our workforce development director, Sarah Buxton, uh, and have her reach out to both Representative Hooper and Representative O'Sullivan uh, with regards to the um, workforce development, uh, what was traditionally the wet fund dollars. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate Thank that. You. Okay, uh, House Appropriations Committee members, we're meeting Monday at nine o'clock. Uh, Maria is on the top of the schedule. So we'll see you all then. Have a good weekend, everyone. I'm gonna take you off live, Madam Chair.